Washington salutes General Norman Schwarzkopf and the troops of Operation Desert Storm. And Gainesville, Florida police say the two college students found dead yesterday were strangled. This is the CBS Evening News. Bob Schieffer reporting. Good evening. Well, already they are saying tonight it was the biggest military celebration in the nation's capital since World War II as Washington today honored the U.S. servicemen and women who fought in the Gulf War, both those who returned and those who died. 200,000 enthusiastic spectators watched a parade of troops and their weapons, all part of the National Victory Celebration. Eric Engberg has our report. It was a day for saying thank you to heroes. Fittingly, it began with those who did not come back. At Arlington National Cemetery, oh. President Bush placed a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknowns. And fighter planes passed over in the missing wingman formation to honor the men and women who died in the Gulf War. The president choked back tears several times as he spoke directly to loved ones of those who died. We celebrate the fact that each person we commemorate today gave up life for principles larger than each of us. Principles that at the same time form the muscle and strength of our national heart. Eileen Rollins said her son Jeffrey, killed in the desert, would have liked the ceremony. Jeff was total military. He loved the service and he loved his country. Faye Hawes's son Jimmy died when a missile hit his tank. He what he was doing and he died for what he believed in. On the wide boulevards just a few blocks from the White House, 8,000 Desert Storm troops were moving out. And once again it was General Norman Schwarzkopf who set the cadence, leading the way as far as the presidential box where he spent the rest of the parade as cheerleader and spotter for a clearly delighted George Bush. So much military hardware was moving that at times it appeared Washington was under attack. The stealth bomber, oddly shaped to deceive radar, led a fleet of 82 planes over the parade route. The Patriot missile got the loudest applause of the day. Several hundred thousand spectators lined the streets, most with the same message. We're here just to say thank you and to celebrate our victory, but to say thank you to all the men and women who serve in the armed forces. Now, I think that this is a wonderful occasion, but we don't want it to happen again, because we don't want war. Peace activists had protested against today's celebration, but they drew only a few protesters to their rally. A Harrier jet fighter on display near the parade was splashed with blood, and the protesters were arrested and taken away. But the overall mood, Bob, was overwhelmingly celebratory and upbeat. And now on Washington's Mall, several hundred thousand people have gathered for a USO show tonight, which will be capped off by what they say will be the biggest fireworks display in Washington history. Eric, this, of course, was called a celebration to honor those who fought this war. But in many ways, it was also in honor of the people back home, wasn't it? I think that's right, Bob. I think that we sent uh, one of the most professional armies in American history to fight the war against Saddam Hussein. They didn't expect any parades on the way back. They just felt that they had done what they were told to do and had accomplished their job. But I think the civilian sector of the uh, country, the Americans who remember Vietnam and the divisions of that era, all wanted to make sure that the mistakes that happened at the end of that war weren't repeated and that these troops were given a hearty thank you and that was all accomplished today. Thank you, Eric. Marching isn't always fun, but for the soldiers in today's parade, the experience was one big love feast. Pentagon correspondent Jim Stewart now with that. Thank you! You helped us! You deserve it! If it was in uniform today, it got hugged, kissed, saluted and cheered as the American military experienced an outpouring of affection not witnessed here in 45 years. Fantastic, it's huge. There's so many people, I ain't seen this many people in my life. It was a day in search of superlatives. It's spectacular. I think it's great. Fantastic. Breathtaking. This is icing on the cake, sir. This is icing on the cake. Don't, like I said, don't get no better than this. 
a day for the heroes of Desert Storm to strut their stuff. Right now, the humming sound you hear is telling me that the weapon is functioning. A day when soldiers became celebrities. How many autographs did you get? Uh, at least a, three or four dozen now. I'm trying to get the writer's cramp. I've had a beer bot for me. I've had people give me shirts, T-shirts. Well, I, I had one lady in particular in an airport um, in, while I was in uniform, and she, she started crying, and she uh, was just welcoming me home. And it was very overwhelming for me because I, you know, I, I just didn't expect anything like that. No one quite expected anything like this. I felt enthused, you know. I could feel the electricity throughout the crowd as we were marching through. I figured maybe a town, a little small town, maybe your hometown have a parade for you, but nothing like this. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. I was also in Vietnam, and we didn't have anything like this coming back. I think it's great. Everyone, it seemed, had that other war on their mind as well today. Everyone's a little guilty about the Vietnam vets. They didn't have as much recognition, and it's a way of showing that we're sorry, and let's start all over again. And some did. Thank you. Welcome home. And I owe you all. Oh, God. Thank you. Jim Stewart, CBS.